So Kwame Nkuma went to the UN and said, OK, in the field of housing, building, and planning, we need somebody who understands the British system, who understands the legislation which we've inherited, which we're not going to change, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, someone who can deal with American needs, which are like Ghanaian, and someone who can, in fact, help us. And the UN put together a team of three, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to be one of the three. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to deal with British, right? They no, they couldn't. Mm -hmm. Because they, after all, these were the mm -hmm. ones that just let go. Is it correct that you and Bram were also instrumental in setting up the School of Planning? OK, here? that came later, but the answer is yes. Uh, because the next step again was, we're not going to give you housing, building, and planning advice. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. You must do it yourself. And uh, the mission that followed with uh, Charlie Abrams and I uh, invented something very simple called Barefoot Planners. Mm -hmm. And there's an article, if you want to look at it, at the EIP journal on Barefoot Planners. Because my view was, you didn't want PhDs. That's the last thing you need. In fact, you don't, you don't need masters. You need people who have some hands-on experience mm -hmm. that water doesn't run uphill and that uh, land has to be treated in a certain fashion. So in fact, they understood that and therefore uh, in 50, I'm guessing now, nine, uh, yeah, um, I went back to Ghana and set up the school, the Institute of Community Planning mm -hmm. at the University of Kumasi. Mm -hmm and uh, shipped out uh, Ashton Johal, who is one of our early graduates, wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. Talked to him last night. Wow. And uh, he became the hands-on field man. Mm -hmm. uh, we hired from CMHC an old friend of mine, uh, Armstrong, mm -hmm. who went out for two years, and then Bran took over. And this is long before CHS even came, right? Oh, yeah. This was around 58, 82. 59, maybe. What other international involvements did the school have then? Well, uh, several, because by this time, Ottawa had discovered what we could do. And uh, the preceding pre agency, preceding CETA, I forgot its name. I don't know, do you remember that at all? The precursor of CEDA? Um, well, yeah. before CEDA arrived, mm -hmm. and the person who ran that agency, of course, was uh, um, oh God, memory, a uh, long, long term mm -hmm. charismatic guy who spent the rest of his life working with me, who is just retired. Mm -hmm. um, Maurice Strong? Hmm? Not, not Maurice Strong. Not Maurice, Maurice Strong. Strong. Thank Maurice you. Strong. Okay. Maurice yeah, Strong. Maurice Strong. Okay. Yeah. So Maurice Strong had just left Power Corporation mm -hmm. and moved to the government and ran that new international agency. Yes. And um, he asked us to take on some students because I always kept on saying, what you need is to train the students. Mm -hmm. So uh, he created a program which brought something like two dozen students from Indonesia, from the Philippines, from uh, um, oh India, mm -hmm. and uh, we had them here for uh, four years on a separate diploma program. So they didn't have to get involved with our qualifi qualifications. What was the diploma program called? called Community and Regional Planning, Interesting. except Exclusive it was not a degree, it was a diploma program. And uh, Dashen ran that, mm -hmm. and then Armstrong and then Bram. You were also involved with uh, Maury Strong and the Stockholm Conference. That's true, that came later. Very interesting shift in the discourse. Um, That's right. Could you tell us about that? Sure. Important? This was in 68, mm -hmm. 69, but this time, uh, oh. Yeah, Trudeau had arrived, yes. and Trudeau had a very different vision for Canada, and he uh, 
appointed uh, Maurice Strong to manage that vision. And that vision really has said we have to have a international meeting to start with because it is member nations only who can do anything. The UN is not a people agency, it's an agency agency. And uh, Maurice said fine, and he became secretary general of the preparatory committee mm -hmm. for the first UN conference on human environment. Mm -hmm. Hold that word, okay? Nice. It met in Stockholm. We went to Stockholm and uh, changed the wording categorically <laughs> because we felt that it's not water or rocks or fish or sky or air. These are all neutral elements. Mm -hmm. They're neither good nor bad. The critical thing is what man does with it mm -hmm. and how we abuse it or misuse it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when the conference came to a conclusion, that was our basic point, a different shift in uh, focus. And that, that should be the focus of the next UN conference. Mm -hmm. And Morris was able with of course, Pierre, to convince the cabinet that uh, if the UN accepts our formulation, mm -hmm. that the next focus would be human settlement, mm -hmm. not human environment. Mm -hmm. So by 72, we had shifted the focus and the UN accepted our invitation. And the first prep conference was on May 12th, mm -hmm. right here at UBC mm -hmm. the next year. What was your role then? This My was, role? This was, uh, this was the time when environmental degradation, yeah, issues of around the environment were coming to public consciousness because of Rachel Carson's silence. That's screen. right, exactly. And uh, Barbara Ward, and Bob, yes. most important, yeah. The answer is correct. So what was your role then in My role? Uh, 1976? <laughs> Shadow boxing. When, uh, my role was really working with Morris Strong. And uh, then came uh, Jim, Jim McDonald, Jim, uh, God, what's his name? Jim McNeil. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent the summer in Ottawa working at Privy Council mm -hmm. to try and, in a sense, interpret uh, our friend Pierre Trudeau's view of the world. Mm -hmm. And let me emphasize that shift was very much. Pierre's idea, yes. and conceptually very clear. I can hear his voice to this moment <laughs> mm -hmm. that they have to live with human settlement yes. as an instrument mm -hmm. and not human environment, which is mm -hmm. much too vague. Mm -hmm. And uh, he pushed this very hard at the UN, and in the fall, he read a speech to which I did some contribution, uh, which said, if we're going to be hosting this, Here's the agenda, and that's the focus. And the U.S. said yes. What was your vision then of the Center for Human Settlements okay. and its linkage with the School of Community and Regional Planning? Okay. I was determined to achieve some legacy for UBC mm -hmm. because I knew conferences come and go. Interesting as they are, they have to leave behind something. And they have to provide continuity and a legacy that makes sense. So we agreed that we would create or push for two agencies, instruments of policy. The UN Center of Human Settlements, which ultimately went to Nairobi, yes. and the UBC Center of Human Settlements, which would stay here and become its executive agent in various ways.